Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Aquint Gymnasium's live coding series, where we walk you through something in an informal manner, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit uh, about this thing at the end. And what is the thing? Well, the last time we did this, we showed you how to register a website domain and then host it for free. Um, and we did that under 20 minutes, which was kind of cool. And today we're doing something completely different. Uh, we're talking about web accessibility with our friend here, Michael Vano. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. And we're going to be, or I'm going to be referring to you as Vano for the rest of this, which is your preferred nickname, correct? <laughs> yep, my last name. Too many Michaels in the world. Not a bad thing. So uh, you're going to be talking a little bit about web accessibility, and specifically, I, so I'm seeing something on the screen here. What are we going to talk about? Uh, so we're going to talk about how to identify very common issues uh, that websites have uh, in regards to accessibility. Um, so, you know, we got things like empty links. Um, typically, people might have just icons inside of them without any kind of text. Uh, how to identify contrast issues, so the difference between a background color and a foreground color, like the text, for example, uh, if there's not enough contrast on that. Um, and we'll also talk about um, the web forms and kind of connecting labels with form elements, uh, making sure that, you know, each form has a label appropriately and vice versa. Each label has is associated with a web form element, um, as well as to how to just identify any images that does not have any alt text on it. And all of these are very, very fundamentally important for accessibility on the web. Excellent, cool. I am looking forward to this because I know a little bit about accessibility. I've definitely uh, had to make elements of the site accessible in the past. Um, at the same time, I know there's a whole lot to learn. And we should also mention that this is gonna be part one of two series. And so we're gonna be looking at ways to identify and improve accessibility in an automated way. And so how are we doing that? What's your, what's your trick for automated uh, web testing or accessibility testing? All right, so I'm gonna shift over the topics here and just dive right into an actual browser here. Um, so I have Chrome open right here. Um, and the, the Chrome extension I have is what's called Wave. And it is a tool that will actually scan your website, similar to if you're familiar with Lighthouse. Um, it'll scan through and identify any issues that you may have. Um, there's also an extension for, uh, for Firefox as well. And with Chrome, uh, you actually can simply click on the icon here. So this is the wave icon. And when you click on it, it just brings up a sidebar right in the website and quickly identifies and actually highlights all the different elements, accessibility elements on your web page. So that's, that's cool. So basically you just ran it. Like there's no run button or anything. No. You just yeah, click I, the button in your browser. Essentially okay. it's just turning it on in a sense. And as you can see, it has all these stats on your website in terms of, you know, issues. Uh, so you got, you know, here we got five errors. we got four contrast issues. Uh, we have some alerts uh, that have features as well. So it kind of gives you the good side of what you were doing right. Um, it gives you kind of a structural element, um, kind of a structure of how your website is organized, um, and just kind of the ARIA elements um, that you've utilized in your website as well. Cool. And I know when we did this last time, we talked about it, that there's a whole lot here. Um, and we could actually talk about each one of these sections. But we're going to kind of focus on errors contrast errors and alerts. Is that right? Do I have that right? Yep. So for this, uh, for this session, uh, we're just going to focus on these two here. So the errors and the contrast errors. So as you can see here, there's actually more detailed. So I just want to go through quickly about kind of the layout and uh, what wave is really good for. Um, so as you see here, if I actually click on these little icons, it shows you which element is actually the, where the error is happening. Um, so if I click on, you know, this one has, it's missing an alt text. So this is an image, doesn't have an alt text on it. If I click on this empty link error, it highlights it and brings me to where there's an empty link. Now, of course, visually you can see that uh, there's, there is something in there, but in the code, it's seeing it as it's completely empty now. 
Now, question for you. Yeah. Sorry. Ahead, um, no so, worries. question. So, again, we've got all this stuff. Is there a way, like, so all of these visual icons and stuff seem really a little overwhelming to me. Like, is there a way we could just, like, focus visually on those errors? Can you turn off those other things? Yeah. So, there's also this feature here where you can say, okay, I want to see the alerts for now. I don't care about nice. the features for now. And structural elements are gone. And don't need to worry about those. So, all we see now are oh, just yeah, the much errors. better. Like and that. even further, if you want to remove some more clutter on the website, there's actually the styles toggle button, which essentially removes all the style sheets. And you Ooh. really just get the bare bones of your website, pure HTML. That's awesome. So again, that that's like you're just stripping it down to its HTML structure, like the skeleton of the site. Pretty much. And it's much clearer now. Yeah, no, it's like this is a trick I used to use for, um, for especially for new web design students to, you know, it really helps them understand how style sheets are separated from HTML um, and reminds me of the old school days of CSS Zen Garden, which was a great website that did the same thing. But OK, so this is great because this so this what you're saying is this helps us just like really identify what the errors are and almost ignore the styles which in yeah. this case aren't super important okay yeah because i mean if you think of a screen reader it you know it doesn't care about your styling it doesn't care you have backgrounds all it cares about is this and the structure of your website mm -hmm. so um one thing also i did want to note about this uh, wave tool is it's it only takes a snapshot of the existing page you're on so if I were to navigate to another page here, like the contact page, um, you know, notice the errors really didn't get updated. So um, because I'm using Angular here, I'll refresh the page and I have to run it again. When I click on it, notice that there's a different number here. So there's a different set of values. So um, when you are utilizing Wave, you do have to check through every single page um, that, you know, you want to check on, right? Uh, so if we look at the details here, so this page actually has everything, all the topics we want to touch on. So we got, uh, so we got, you know, missing links. We got the empty links here. We got contrast issues. Uh, we got form issues here. And we got the missing alt tags. Do you mind, uh, do you mind turning off those, um, those other, the features and stuff? Ah, uh, yes. So that's a, it's another feature, which, uh, you know, I made a suggestion to the guys who developed this thing, if that can be kind of a saved feature, because I think it'd be very helpful to have that. So now we can just focus on just our issues here. So we got this. So let's go to the first one we were talking about, which is the empty links. So if you look at the empty links here. We can even look at the description, what it's talking about. So what it means, why it matters. Um, it even gives you a suggestion of how to fix it. And it talks about how it actually identifies the issue. Um, and it even gives a link to the actual WCAG guideline. So if I click on this, it'll actually open up a new page, bring me straight to why this is important. So this is why Wave is like a very, a very robust um, tool to use, right? Some people might not fully understand why we're doing this. They have all the information here for you. So now getting into the code, we have these empty links. So those look like they're, they're, they're like, those are like the social icons um, that someone, that this designer threw into the corner of their site. Yep. Um, and I can tell you now that it's, you know, it's using the Font Awesome Library, if you're familiar with that, mm -hmm. um, which just uses fonts and renders them as, you know, kind of icons. And these are essentially fonts, but there's actually no content inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to, let's see here. And I know that a lot of people use, a lot of, a lot of designers will use that because it's a lightweight way to, um, to throw these in a standardized method for putting icons on. Okay. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, it's really great um, for these things. Uh, but you just have to be careful with using them in this kind of setting for accessibility. Because as you can see, even though this A tag has code inside of it, there is no text mm. whatsoever to identify mm -hmm. what this link means. 
So if a screen reader were to just land on this A tag, it'll mm -hmm. just be, it'll just say link and nothing, not at all. So the way we fix this is there is um, a trick, a kind of a technique that's being used widely throughout. Um, and it's a class uh, which a bunch of properties looks. So I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see it more clearly. Uh, so this class here, SR only, um, this actually, this comes with a lot of um, kind of CSS libraries like Bootstrap um, and many other kind of foundational CSS libraries. Um, and they have an SR only class, which essentially means that you want to visually hide this element, but it's okay. still present on the website. So if you notice, they don't actually have a display none because display none mm -hmm. will actually be ignored. Oh, that's a good thing to know. So I, did, I, I, I knew that at one point and then I kind of forgot it, but that's worth worth mentioning that whenever you put a CSS style of display none on a thing, you're really, not only are you visually like making it disappear, but to screen readers and other accessible devices, you're making it disappear. Exactly. Um, so, you know, this SR only just visually hides it from the user. So in here, so here's our code with all the a tag links. And I've have some commented out code here. So I've created a span class or a span tag in here with the class of SR only. And it has this text inside of it. So now when a screen reader lands on this text, it'll say a link, visit my LinkedIn page and so on as you go through it. And a cool little thing as well I wanna show you. So I'm gonna save this up. Now, you know, visually, nothing's gonna change. It all looks the same. But now when I run the wave, we've now gotten rid of those errors. So no more empty links. I'm gonna remove these extra stuff. And not only that, if we take off the styles, because remember, this is a, just a class we're using. When I take off the styles, we actually now see the links visible. And this is what essentially the screen reader sees. Right, that's doubly cool. Excellent, yeah. nice. Okay, so we, we just chopped away 50% uh, of our errors, if I remember correctly. Yeah, pretty much more than 50% <laughs> right. here. So what else do we got? <laughs> All right, so what else do we have? We also got these contrast errors. So I'm gonna turn the styles back on just to see what it's talking about. So it's actually saying that this whole navigation here. So these four errors just refer to each of the buttons. And it's saying that this white text and the background is not enough contrast. And what's cool is when I actually click on this, there's a tab here for the contrast, which will actually take the background color and the foreground color and show you all this information. I see, yes, we've got a contrast ratio of 1.59 to one and I don't my, I don't have my contrast ratios memorized, but I don't think but I don't think that's good. I don't think that's a good ratio. And by the way, we seeing we're seeing like these massive red fails at the bottom, which always bother me. So whenever oh these ones here yeah like what's that? Oh, so these are just saying that you're failing this double A uh, uh. requirement, and these double A and triple A standards are essentially. Um, the guidelines, the WCAG guidelines stating that, you know, a website is of a, you know, double A or triple A standard mm -hmm. uh, in terms of accessibility. And these are just kind of stating that, you know, these websites are this much accessible. They've met these guidelines and requirements to be an accessible website. Right. And I remember in a, uh, in a previous conversation, you know, you had mentioned that like, you know, double A is something that most websites can kind of stream to to hit and triple a is like really tough so like the triple a yes. is more rigorous uh and and relatively difficult to attain is that fair to say uh yes in a way um okay. it's it is more difficult um to maintain it's very strict right much okay. more stricter than double a um, and it's good to know that that you know government bodies are typically using double A as a standard mm -hmm. 
to declare a website actually accessible. I see. Okay, so so essentially, like if you hit double A, like you're doing pretty good, and maybe don't stress out over trying to get to triple A. Yeah, triple A is like you know you're you know you're a superstar, and you know there's, there's not a lot of websites, if at all, that right. are actually triple A that I know of right now. Okay, so how do we fix this? Those 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 red fails are like starting to freak me out. So they're they're reminding me of my algebra class in in high school. So I know. Right. So let's get rid of these. So I mean, you know, there's one way you can do it where you, if you click on here, you actually get a little color picker, uh, and you know you can choose the color you want. Uh, so you can see this one's you know getting a better ratio and you know but then that's of course you know right. designers would kill me uh you know it's going off of the color scheme here um so you know another way we could you do this is just adjusting in here changing the lightness and it's going to close the color picker for now and you can see as i change it this change mm -hmm. suddenly to pass so we can keep going and increasing the ratio here and there we go so now we found the color that has passed. Wow, wait, that's a huge difference. That's like uh, <laughs> we're, we're creating a different color scheme, although ironically, it kind of matches the um, the logo, <laughs> the JD design. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, but then this is the thing where it's like, um, you know, this is kind of good to know ahead of time and things to consider before you actually start, you know, developing even a website. It's good to think of these kind of issues for accessibility ahead of time. Uh, because now I got to update all these other guys as well. So I'm just going to go into the code here. And this is in my header. So I'm going to update this. So this is the code that actually references those. So the background color, I'm going to use the one we grabbed here. And what I did for the hover color, I'm just actually inverting it. So that the background color is now white. And just flipping the colors around. And main color is the one we just selected. And now, nice. when I hover over, we got that. And the main thing, contrast arrows, zero. Wipe them all out, just like that. We've got, we've got big errors there. We still have three something errors. Yeah. So we got, so we dealt with the empty links, contrast issues. Now, if you look at errors, you can look at it, this form. So we got a missing form label. Sorry, I'm just going to be the guy. Can we turn? Can we turn off the uh, the features? Oh, you know what? Yes, yes. Um, so we got the missing form label. So what this is saying is that there's a uh, there's a form control, so a form element that does not have a label associated with it. And then this one is actually saying that there's multiple form labels on one element. So. You look at the code it's again just going to do inspect element on this phone element so you can see here is the input and we got the label phone here optional but if you look at the label it has its four and its name so it's actually referencing this input here rather than this input got it so it looks like so it looks like Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's just, uh, it looks like a case of, you know, somebody copy and pasting code. That was my theory. My theory was there was a uh, relatively, um, let's say, I'm not going to say lazy, let's say someone who was in a rush. Yeah. They were on a, they had a production schedule, yep. and so they were doing some copying and pasting, yep. and then they neglected to update the, uh, yep. the name. And that's, you know, that's a very real world case, right? Like, we have lots of scenarios sure. where people are under the pressure, just quickly get things yep. together and you know this is what wave is good for is it quickly catches these little things that hey you might have missed in your rush mm -hmm. just you know take a step back yep. quickly yep. have a look at it and just you know fix it quickly so i mean you know so here i do have it comes it out so all i did here is the difference is just changing it so it's now referencing this id so the label for it takes in an id references this save it up and now it's going to close the inspector element here now we just killed two errors with one nice. code edit so we are now down to just this one once again oh man you're getting me uh, this is we're, we're getting close to the payoff here so let me just let me okay let me try here right here okay so one linked image missing alternate text so alt tag so 
Yeah, and we've got an image here that just is, doesn't have an alt tag, and that's bad. Yeah. It's like one of the first things I tell every, you know, when we introduced, uh, when we talk about images in HTML, like you, you should be adding an, H, uh, an alt tag for everything. But so what's going on here? Yeah. Let's look at it. So, and we can always confirm it as well. Once again, looking at the inspect element, and we can just see that, you know, this element does not have mm -hmm. an alt tag at all. There's just literally no, it's not even like it's an empty value. It just doesn't, they didn't even no. put it yeah, in. Yeah, it's just not there at oh. all. Okay. So, so let's go into there. So that's in our header. For that was our logo right here. So I have the code here. So this is the original code right here. Let's see an uncomment code here. And all the difference is, is just essentially I'll tag and it's just my logo. And now it has some context. Has some content, and now when we run the wave tool, now we have zero errors at all. Especially if we look at here, and look, it's not even showing up here anymore. It doesn't need to. Right. There's no more errors. <laughs> yeah, right. Because that's yeah. Okay, so you literally cleared it out. Yeah. Now that's awesome. Um, this is cool. We're we're pretty much there. But now we should probably talk about that alt tag stuff and maybe this will set us up for for uh, part two where we're going to talk a little bit about manual testing so i would notice that again like that the um the alt tag in that case so, so wave figured out like okay you're missing it but that says nothing about whether or not it's a good alt tag yes. or a bad one right mm -hmm. and so that is where we kind of stop for now because in many ways that, that enters the world of, of subjective analysis or, or differences of opinion as to, you know, what makes a, 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 a accessible page. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's, that's part two. We're going to talk about all the different ways and some more tips and tricks. Um, but this by itself was pretty cool i could see this being used uh, everyone should be thinking about how to do this um and any last yeah any any last words before we uh sign off for the day no other than um you know this extension is constantly being maintained um you know i've kind of kept track of it for the last two years and they've made significant improvements so i mean they are very active um yeah. and they're making great improvements and you know the note about saving settings these guys are you know they actually did reply back to me and they said that they're actually on it so i mean you know it, this is a really great plugin to, to utilize for accessibility testing and you know it's one of those things where you can say you know as a rule of thumb you just have to have no errors through the wave tool that's that's you know the starting point then you can build off from there so yeah nice well, thanks for, for introducing it to yeah. me, and um, I'm looking forward to our next section. Yeah. But for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Yep. Thanks, folks, and we look forward to seeing you down the road. Right. Take care.